Taxi drivers of Reddit, has anyone actually jumped into your taxi and screamed, follow that car? If yes, what happened? I was in New Orleans once and a cab I was in got sideswiped by a drunk driver. The drunk driver then took off. I told the cab to follow him, which he did. We ended up in a parking lot and we watched them go into an apartment building. Cabby had the station call the cops. I wrote a statement for the cabby and he called me a new cab while he waited for the cops. Hey guys, we have a new channel where we go over very in-depth stories. Whether it's a Karen on the loose, or a story about a mother's perspective on her husband throwing out their daughter's ashes. These are a treat to get immersed in. The link will be in the description, so make sure to subscribe to the new channel. Story 2. I drove a taxi one summer in a party resort. One night, two guys jumped in and yelled, follow that car, which was another taxi that I knew the driver of and I obliged. Turns out one of their mates was drunk as hell and decided to just go to their hotel without telling them. They only saw the guy leaving the club drunk and they thought he was going to a strip club without them. He was actually going to their hotel as he was hammered. Another time, three girls jumped in the car and said follow that car. The car in question was a black sedan, tinted back windows. Yet, yeah, wasn't that shady in my honest opinion. We follow the car for 15 minutes, leaving the resort going into a forest. The girls start freaking out, as one of their friends, also a girl, was seen stepping into that car. Yeah, turns out that she just hooked up with some guy in the club they were at earlier. And she was about to suck his dong when we pulled up next to them. Weirdest summer ever. I still feel like it's risky for someone to get into a car that they don't know, with tinted windows and everything. Even if it's for a hookup, because, I don't know, people kidnap people. I don't know where this party resort was, that would change things a bit, I think. Because some places just have way more kidnappings than others. Or, I guess if they're adults, it's an abduction. Either way, I would not be inclined to get into a car with a stranger like that. Story 3. Friend of mine is a taxi driver and this has happened to him. An elderly man rushed inside his taxi and pointed out loud to follow a red Toyota. This man never explains why to follow, just tries to frantically call somewhere. My friend asked multiple times if they need to call the police, but the man just waved no and pointed to follow the car. They circle around the town, finally ending up at the front of a house, where the car that was followed parks. As the car stops, the man says, Hold on a moment, I'll pay, and jumps out of the car. An elderly lady steps out of the red Toyota, and the man, apparently her husband, starts to scream, Why did you leave me at the mall? And walks inside the house like nothing happened. Man returns and pays the driver, being sorry about it all at the same time. My friend thought they were following a burglar or something, but it turned out the lady just forgot her husband at the mall. Funny situation in a way, but kind of sad too. Story 4. This sort of happened to me about 20 years ago. Not a taxi driver, but I was driving down a main road and saw a dude running around with a baseball bat and then come cop cars parked on a side street. Young me decided that I wanted to get involved, so I pulled down the side street and found a cop on foot a good distance away from his car. I told him about baseball bat guy and he gets on his radio. Guess he got an immediate update on his radio, looks at how far he is from his car and he says, Can you drive me down the road? I'm thinking, hell yeah, and tell him to jump in. He does, and I am seriously driving around back roads with a cop riding shotgun giving me directions while on his radio. Only lasted for about two minutes, then he jumps out to pursue on foot. Not a very satisfying end to the story since I never found out what happened. But damn, that's my story. That's kind of cool to be involved in a chase that way. But I also kind of like to think that the cop got out of the car because he's like, man, this guy absolutely sucks. It'll be faster on foot. I know that probably wasn't the case because, you know, you have to not be in a car to actually apprehend someone, but still. Story 5. I got hit by a drunk driver who ran a red light. My car was totaled and my passenger was sent to the hospital in an ambulance. Cop at the scene said that he would give me a ride to the hospital once they got my car towed and the scene cleaned up, since it was like 3am and cold outside. We go to leave and I sit in the back of the car, not in handcuffs or anything, just chilling like I was riding in a cab, just making small talk with the cop about the accident. As we're driving, he hears something on the radio and immediately tells me, hang on, I gotta respond to this, and then hits the lights and sirens and starts speeding big time. We pull into an alleyway and he's unbuckling to jump out before the car even stops moving, and he yells back at me, stay down, you're not supposed to be in my car, stay down and don't get up until I come back. Then he gets out. I peek and he's got his gun out and it's clear he's chasing after someone on foot. He disappears into the darkness and I hear gunshots, sirens, and other cop cars pull up. Nobody notices me because they're so busy with whatever is going on. I was a little worried, like, what the hell did this cop just get unalived while I was in the back of his car? But luckily after about 10 minutes he came back to the car just fine and we continued our drive to the hospital. He explained that someone was running from the cops and he was the only car near enough to try to cut them off. And he basically chased the guy back toward the original cops. When the suspect realized he was cornered, he pulled out a weapon and exchanged a couple of shots with one of the original cops, before being tased and caught. It didn't sound like anyone was hurt, which was good. However, the cop giving me a ride was really freaked out. On the way back to the hospital, he kept going on and on about how he shouldn't have been giving me a ride. 
and how he would have been in huge trouble if he or I had been hurt in the encounter. I felt bad about accepting what was supposed to be a short ride, and you could tell he was really feeling like, I thought giving this kid a ride was the right thing to do, but now I realize why we aren't allowed to do this. Someone could have really been hurt. When he let me out of the cop car at the hospital, I thanked him, and he just said, If anyone ever asks how you got to the hospital, you walked. And I agreed. I figure it's been almost 20 years now, so that cop is probably long retired. But still appreciate him giving me a ride. Crazy experience. Just in case no one realized, this was more of a reply to the last one, not really an answer to the prompt. This next one will be though, so moving on. Story 6. I'm actually a taxi driver. Bike taxi slash pedicab. I was hanging out at a corner when a coworker of mine got a ride across the intersection. Suddenly, a guy walks up to me and tells me to follow that cab, but keep a distance. This guy looked current or ex-military. Demeanor, haircut, attitude. Has one of those earbuds like the agents from the Matrix. Exuded the vibe of being very professional, competent, and not giving a crap at the same time. So, I was born for this moment. I read all the Tom Clancy books as a kid. All the books about spycraft during World War II and the Cold War every spy movie ever made, etc. I kept about 100 yards distance and then would accelerate when they went around a curve anytime they were near a light or intersection. I have all the lights memorized. Just to ensure we would make the same light, but a little later than they did. At one point, a car pulls up alongside and another guy switches places with the original guy and we keep going. After about 12 blocks, the pedicab pulls over ahead of us and the guy tells me to pull over. Hands me a 20 for a $12 ride. Although, I would have done it for free just to live my 9-year-old fantasy. Probably just the local cops, but I can dream. Story 7. Not entirely related, but I once had somebody jump into my car and I wasn't even a taxi. I was driving down the street in Boston and was stopped at a red light, minding my own business. Suddenly, my passenger door was flung open and somebody climbed in. Completely shocked, I didn't even have time to react. For some reason, it never entered my mind that I should be alarmed or concerned about this trespasser. So when I saw it was an elderly lady, I just remained calm. Without skipping a beat, she said in a thick Russian accent, You, take me home, please. So I started driving. I asked her where she lived, but she just said, Keep going, I tell you when I want to stop. At that point, it dawned on me that she probably had dementia and that she likely thought I was someone she knew, or maybe even a taxi. Nope. After a few minutes of conversation, it was abundantly clear that this woman had simply picked the first car she saw, got in, and requested a ride. During the 10-minute car ride, she asked me about my life. I was in college studying psychology at the time, and when I told her this, she said, You make good psychologist. Very nice boy. It put a big smile on my face. My grandparents had all died either before I was born or during early childhood, so I don't think I ever had an elderly person say something like that to me. It felt nice. Finally, we reached an apartment building and she told me to pull over. When I put the car in park, she turned to me and said, Thank you driving me today. I assured her it was no problem at all and wished her the best. And her parting words to me as she climbed out were, Very good boy. Good luck with studies. After pausing for a moment, I drove away and just kind of let it be. It was such a nonchalant and comfortable interaction that I resisted my temptation to immediately text friends to tell them what had happened. It felt like that would have cheapened it, or turned it into a novelty. It was just so natural and I went with it. She's unlikely to be alive at this point, but I hope she enjoyed the rest of her days. Godspeed, Russian grandma I had for a day. I do have to wonder what the thought process was of this plan of hers, though. Like, I feel like she got really lucky jumping into OP's car. OP was so down for the ride. We never got to hear if OP became a good boy psychologist, though. I feel like that would be the piece of information I need to wrap this story up nicely. You know, just put a bow on it, finish it up. Story 8. Oh, I'm not a taxi driver, but I was the passenger for a story that is similarly cliched. Back when I was an actor slash active drug addict slash alcoholic, what's the difference I know, I had a director threaten to recast me a week before the show if I was late to rehearsal again. To put that into perspective, recasting a major role after rehearsals have started is generally unheard of, and almost unthinkable so late in the rehearsal process. She was really fed up with me. On this particular day, I was running late as usual and had five minutes to get to rehearsal. It was a 10-minute walk or a five-minute drive. I flagged a cab, hopped in, and said, I need you to take me to this address dress and, if you can, I need you to step on it. The driver smiled wide and said, I've always wanted to hear that. Cue him putting the pedal to the metal. Within 10 seconds, we were approaching 65 miles per hour on a 30 mile per hour city street. We were weaving through traffic, clipping yellow lights too close for comfort, and generally whipping this cab around in an extraordinarily haphazard and irresponsible fashion. I was stunned, wide-eyed in absolute shock and terror, unable to process that he quite literally heeded my request or that this was actually happening. I thought I was going to die. It was the best cab ride of my life. 
I was two minutes early to rehearsal. OP definitely got what they asked for here. Pretty wild that the driver was willing to put everything on the line for it though, because I have a feeling if you're caught, like, arrested doing something like that, you could pretty easily lose your job forever. But I guess this cab driver was like, I've got nothing left to lose. If I'm going out, I'm going out in style. And it sounds like nothing came of it, so you know what? They just did their job very well, while also minorly endangering the public, but I'll let it slide this time. Story 9. Not a taxi driver, but one time after a work party, a bunch of co-workers and I were going to a different bar, and we needed to take cabs. A few of us got into one, and the rest into another. One of my co-workers told our cabbie, Hey, if you can beat that other cab, I'll give you an extra 20 bucks. The cabbie smiled in the rear view and said, Okay, buddy. He started weaving between cars until he got in front of the other cab. Then, he timed it perfectly so he could get the other cab stuck at a red light while he just made it past. With that head start, he had really no need to rush, and he calmly got us to the bar first. I think he actually really enjoyed it and got a pretty nice tip for a short trip. Story 10. Not quite what OP asked, but almost. A colleague of mine, a UK police officer, was on foot patrol and saw a robbery in the distance where a driver was pulled from their car and the robbers drove off in their car. My mate did exactly as OP has said. Stopped a civilian car and said, follow that car. The driver apparently went wild trying to keep up with the robbers, all the while with a uniformed police officer in his passenger seat giving a commentary to his base. They lost the stolen car, and my colleague asked his driver to stop. He got out and let the driver go without asking his details. As the driver went into the distance, my mate realized he had taken out his peg, truncheon in the car, and left it on the dashboard. Luckily, the driver rang in later and it was returned. No idea what happened to the robbers, stolen car, or victim though. Sorry. Okay, I gotta say real fast, as a North American boy, one of these sentences really messed with me. Well, really, one of these words. Because OP wrote peg and then in brackets, truncheon, which I had to look up. Because neither of the words used, not the original nor the clarifying word, were words that I knew. From what I gather, looking it up, it's just a, like a, a baton, a, a hit stick, you know. But yeah, that one word, or that one phrase, I guess, made me realize that, uh... We were not North America. I mean, I guess also the fact that it says UK police officer at the beginning. Story 11. Been driving a cab for about a year now, usually working the 6pm to 3am shift. My dispatcher radios me to a house 5 minutes till the end of my shift. Short 2 minute drive later, small city, I pull up in the circle driveway, as a car pulls out the other end and speeds off. The largest man I have ever seen in my life comes barreling out of the house like a freaking bull and jumps in my cab. Did you see the car that just left? Follow it. I caught up to the car and followed it out to the highway. As soon as it got on the highway, the car put on its hazard lights and floors it. The mountain of a man in the backseat says, My wife is in labor and my father-in-law is driving. Tells me to catch up and he would give me $200. So, naturally, I floor it, going about 90 miles per hour in a 45 zone. His father-in-law happened to be the city police chief and had called in an escort. Looked in my rearview mirror and see four cop cars about a mile off and catching up quick. I panicked and almost started to slow down when he told me that they were an escort. Sure enough, two of the cops go speeding past me like I was in park. Keep in mind, I'm still going 90. The other two pull behind me as we still had two to three miles to go. Another minute or two passes and we come squealing up to the ER, two nurses already waiting outside. He thanks me, hands me the money, and jumps out of the car. Now that must feel frickin' cool. You're essentially part of a police escort going crazy speeds. That must have been really fun, and, uh, hope he got paid pretty nicely for it, too. Story 12. I'm not a cab driver, and I was never told to follow that car. But, I was sitting at the Whataburger drive through one night, and a guy jumped into my car and said, I'm not gonna rob you or anything, but you need to get the hell out of here right now. Two guys just ran me off the road. Okay, so it's not an exact quote, as this happened 20 years ago, but that was the gist. I thought he was full of crap, so I started to argue with him. When I noticed two huge dudes pulling a tire iron out of the trunk of a car, one of them pointed at my car and said, There he is! They started running towards my car, so I took the hell off. They gave chase, but I had a head start and knew the neighborhood. I was driving way too fast for those streets and hit a speed bump way too hard, but the head start gave me enough time to turn down a side street and to turn off the lights. I saw them pass the street in my rearview mirror and waited a while. And then I dropped the dude off at one of his friend's houses a block or two away from where we hid out. I apologized for not believing him, and he thanked me for getting him away. Story 13. I did it to a cabbie once. Long story, possibly worth the read. My girlfriend was getting ready to go on a massive trip for work that would keep me from seeing her for over a month. Just prior to her announcement she would be gone for so long, I had gone out and gotten an engagement ring made for her. I just got the ring back, and I didn't have the nerves, the patience, or the ability to be quiet about it for over a month while she was gone, so I had to propose to her before she left. 
I had this massive idea that I would wait for her to go to the airport, I would get there just before her, sneak through the crowd of people that were checking in, and just as she was about to go through security, there I would be, off to the sides ready for the big moment, drop to a knee in front of a massive group of people like in the movies. So I saw her off from our apartment with a hug, a kiss, and a big I'll miss you. She left her front of the building in a cab and immediately after, the second cab I called showed up. I hopped in, yelled to the cabbie, follow that cab. But more importantly, don't let the passengers see you following them. On the way, I explained to him how great she was, how she came into my life at just the right time, and how I couldn't imagine my life with anyone but her. We felt the same. With his broken English, he said it was cute, like in the movies. We made it to the airport, almost at the same time as her, but stayed back. I paid the cabbie and snuck into the arrivals doors. And I managed to hastily work my way through the large amounts of domestic arrivals showing up, past the electric check-in terminals, and right off to the side of the security line, just out of sight from where she would walk up. I waited for what felt like an eternity to see her beautiful face, the smile I knew so well, the arms that spent so much of our nights wrapped around me. Then I saw her. She looked as perfect as I could ever imagine. I was thinking a million things at once. That's going to be Mrs. My Name. The mother of my children, the person I'll grow old with. Then, there was some other guy with her. He wasn't just walking with her, she was walking with him, holding hands. They looked like a couple. I couldn't believe my eyes. Was it the same girl? Did my cab accidentally follow the wrong one? Did we enter a different dimension? Was I dreaming? My whole world started to come down. Then, she kissed him. As quickly as my heart raced at the thought of our lives together, it quickly slowed with the thought of her not being there and growing old with me. She would grow old with someone else. Would she? Could she? Could I forgive her? I quickly popped the collar up on my jacket, turned away while still holding the ring box in my pocket, and found my way through the groups of people back to the arrivals doors and out to a cab. I made my way home, spending the next few days thinking about everything. Anytime she texted me or FaceTimed, I held it together. I talked with close male and female friends trying to figure out what the hell was happening. No one understood what was going on, and I couldn't find a reason. She eventually came back, I picked her up from the airport, and we small talked in the car. We got back to our place, I asked how her trip was, who she went with, where they went, what they did. She mentioned work people. She asked me how my time was. I told her straight up. It was terrible. I said I had gone to the airport, I followed the cab, I waited at the gate, I saw what I saw. She told me it was just a fling, it was someone from work. They clicked over their mutual disdain for their supervisor. That was 11 years ago. Since then, I've met my best friend, developed our relationship, started dating slowly, and we're about to get married in the fall. I couldn't have asked for a better woman, and all of the crap I went through got me to the place I'm at now. And I'm better for it. Well, if this just wasn't the most roller coaster of a post I've ever read, I had no idea that there was going to be a twist like that at all. My heart broke for OP. That's terrible. Right as he's about to propose to her. That's insanity. I'm glad it all worked out for OP and he found the right woman for him. But I can't imagine finding out that the other woman is the wrong woman that way. Anyway, thank you for watching, everybody. I hope you have a wonderful day or night wherever you are, and I will see you in the next one.